turn to order and I'll um, we'll do the roll call. Mark Bartuszek. Here. Leo Giesen. Here. Matt Goldotti. Matt, are you on yet? Okay, we'll come back. Dennis Havlicek. Here. Kim Holden. Here. Tammy Pexa. Here. And Jean Kubish here. So right now, um, Matt is the only one that wasn't here. Matt, are you are you uh, online yet? Uh, Jean, I just accepted him into the meeting. It'll be one second, I think, before he shows up. <coughs> there. Yep, he should be on now. Okay. I'm here. Sorry Matt, about that. Here? Okay, so please, uh, please show that all board members are present. And um, could I have a motion to approve our agenda? So move. So move. So move. In a second. Second. Okay, do I need to call everybody separately or just? I think you do have to do a roll call. Okay, Mark? Yes. All those in favor, Mark, Leo? Yes. Matt? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jean, yes, so that's uh, all, all approved the agenda. And uh, now we have, um, the action items and the first one is uh, approval of the graduation date change. Yeah, I'm gonna start this out. I'm gonna have a, uh, Nicole Adams, our uh, principal at the high school, uh, talk about the details of the plan right now and then we can discuss this. But uh, as you know, we've been keeping informed and we decided early on to uh, do a survey of uh, students and parents and gave you the results of that. It was overwhelming that people wanted to delay graduation until August 1st, that we do a drive-through on May 29th on uh, giving them their robes, their gown and hats and everything. Um, but uh, we received an email on Friday from the Commissioner of Edu Education that gave us guidelines for graduation ceremonies. And I didn't want to react or put anything in the weekly wrap at that time because I had to talk to some superintendents about that and, and take a closer look at it. Um, and actually uh, talking to people who decided to wait until today's conference call that was uh, sponsored by MSBA and the Commissioner of Education was on there today. And um, it was very uh, expectation, really. It's more of a directive than a guidance because they said um, any large group gatherings uh, are not allowed, whether it's now or later in the summer. And uh, she was very clear about that. I will say this, um, if you looked at the notes on the chat that uh, goes on in Zoom, there's a lot of uh, upset uh, school board members and superintendents on the call uh, because of the loss of local control. I had a feeling that was gonna happen, so, uh, and, uh, Nicole, you know, we talked briefly on Friday, so she met with her administrative team uh, to put a contingency plan in place, and she's going to go over that today. So, like I said, right now we cannot, uh, according to the uh, Commissioner of Education, Mary Catherine Ricker, we cannot host um, a large group graduation, whether it's inside, outside, whatever. They were very clear about that today, uh, whether it's now, uh, a month from now or two months from now, it's a no. So do they have the authority to to do that. Technically, I would say yes. Um, technically, well, yes. I mean, you're you're supposed to follow the Department of Education and the state. Um, I'm. Just, I, I would. I would bet because it's an emergency, a declared emergency, that yes, you'd get in trouble. It's. I think it's within the executive order of the governor too. Yeah, I think like that. that. Mm -hmm. So um, Nicole's here tonight to present uh, uh, changes uh, to graduation where, and she's done a, her and her staff have done a wonderful job. Uh, they did a great job with uh, honors night, did that the best they could. 
Um, and like I said, we've got that drive through on the May 29th. And there's a couple things she has in the plans right now uh, to honor our 2020 20 grads. So, Nicole, why don't you take it from here? And then we'll open it up for our questions, comments, and some discussion. Well, great. Thanks, everybody. Um, I am actually going to share my screen here, and I'm just going to walk you through a very brief PowerPoint um, with a couple of slides just to kind of lay things out. And then um, I will happily answer any questions that you have afterwards. So with that, So as Superintendent Dipburner just indicated, we are um, again reconsidering our um, response to the graduation ceremony. We had been hopeful that we would be able to postpone and were optimistic that by August 1st, perhaps um, guidelines would change and we would essentially buy ourselves time to be able to give our 2020 graduates um, the ceremony that they, reserve, that they deserve. Um, as Superintendent Dipperner indicated, the uh, mandate that came out on Friday indicates that that is not an option any longer. So um, rationale for the change in plans is that the Minnesota Department of Education and Health indicates that a delay with hopes of a full ceremony is no longer a viable option. Um, we want to provide closure for our students and families, and we do need to prepare for fall of 2020, which by all indications is going to um, be uh, a continually fluid situation. So um, what we are proposing is we're gonna maintain our May 29th senior drive-through in which they will pick up their caps and gowns. Um, our staff will be there. Um, there's a variety of other elements that we're working on incorporating. We've worked very closely with New Prague Police Department to ensure that we are um, following appropriate social distancing guidelines. Um, and we'll continue to be working with um, the logistics on that. That evening, um, and this was still part of the original plan, this hasn't changed, we had 13 students who are going to be, um, uh, going to be shipping out and starting active duty um, as early as Sunday, May 31st. So um, even with the original plan, we did have that option for individual graduation recognition. Um, and we will proceed to do that that evening with those 13 students um, so that they can receive their diploma and have that closure before their military service officially begins. Following that, um, Saturday, May 30th through June 30th, we don't know um, exactly, um, student, we're, students may request an individual ceremony. Um, so any student who wishes to have that opportunity to walk across the stage in Trojan Stadium um, will have that opportunity to do so in their cap and gown with their immediate household um, available. We will um, develop a schedule based on the RSVPs we receive and work with families for an agreeable time slot um, to ensure that any student who wants that formal ceremony, though it will be um, very limited um, and will follow strict social distancing guidelines, we'll have that opportunity. And we will then follow it with um, a virtual graduation ceremony, um, which we will work with a company to be professionally produced and it will have many of the same component, components of an actual commencement, um, including the awarding of diplomas, student speeches, musical performance, um, as much as we can incorporate to um, ensure that our students and our families have um, a well-produced, polished keepsake. Who are the musical performances by? Our students. Okay. I was our just seniors. wondering if they had anything prepared. Yep, they've been, oh, been, work, they've been working on it, and they, uh, Nicole T.G. and Mark Disher, have contingency plans both for a live performance and virtual if need be. So that was a very specific request from our students that regardless of the format of graduation, um, they wanted to be sure that students were still involved in that ceremony, be it virtual or physical. Which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> cool. 
Any other questions or concerns? Uh, will the school board members be a part of this or? We, well, because this is new, we haven't worked out all of the details, but we are actually thinking that because we have to really limit this, we're gonna have probably only a couple of staff members there. Um, and so I don't believe school board members would necessarily be there, but we could certainly discuss that. Um, we are creating this for the first time ever. Um, but one of the options we had considered was that we would allow parents to be the ones to hand their students their diplomas because we're not going to physically hand it to them. Students will have to pick it up off the table. I was I was asking more if we were if we would be tuning you know to the virtual ones if we'd be tuning in. For oh. That. Oh, that's absolutely available to everybody. And we still have a lot, as far as the virtual ceremony goes, we still have a lot of elements that we would need to pull together for that. And so um, there could be a possibility that we would um, feature the school board in some way, shape, or form. But we need, we need some professional guidance on how we're going to go about doing that. Thanks. Okay, um, we'll just go around. I'll just call on board members right now if you got a question or comment. Um, we'll go to Kim next. Or you can pass. Well, I, I really don't have anything more to say. I mean, she's explained it well. I already had sent you an email saying that I think, you know, before the original plan was a great one. And I think this one will be too. I think they've done a lot of hard work and I appreciate all the school and the administration has done to make it as good as it can possibly be. Okay. Dennis? I'm fine with the plan. It sounds good. Leo? I don't think we have a whole lot of options, so I guess that's the way we go. Okay, Matt? Yeah, can you explain the uh, the individual ceremony a little bit better? Is it a, you said it's all the way through June 30th, or is it just four days through June 3rd? Through June 3rd, we just don't know. It will it will really depend on how many students sign up to have that individual ceremony and will have to be responsive to the student request. So that schedule will be largely driven by students. They will be brief. Um, so far, what we're envisioning is that we would have chairs set up on the field for the families to sit in immediate households. We would play pomp and circumstance. The graduate would have the opportunity to walk in. We would announce their name. We would put their um, picture up on the scoreboard like we usually do. We would go through the, uh, the language that says they have met all of their requirements um, by the state of Minnesota, and then they would get their diploma. Okay, thanks for that clarification. Sure. Okay, Tammy? Sorry, I couldn't unmute. Um, I'm not going to say anything because <laughs> I'm one of those parents. I, I feel we feel bad. I mean, it's not the way this we want this to happen. Right, Don't, it's not, and it, I mean, nothing about this whole issue is ideal. No. But um, I get to go upstairs and live with the senior, yeah. so I feel sorry for all of you who are going to tell all the other seniors because it's not going to be an easy conversation. This is something that they have been looking forward to and they were willing to postpone. And my understanding in talking to many of them is they want to have the opportunity to move that tassel together. Yeah. And, you know, I don't, it, it is what it is and we're going to move forward, but we were, to I be hope honest, vote we were in the planning, November election. <laughs> yeah, we were planning a ceremony in our front yard on graduation night. We were planning it last night. I've heard more than one people say that they they're just going to do their own graduation. Yep. That was that was uh, that was uh, mentioned to the commissioner today. I mean, you got to remember too. There's high schools out in rural Minnesota that have, 
you know, 21 in their graduating class and they had plans to spread it out across the football field. And they had their graduation was under two weeks away and all of a sudden this came up. Right. So the frustration was that they came late with these, this basically directive. It came late and uh, one size fits all. And it's completely so, asinine. But, oh. yeah. So we're dealing with Mark. I think you guys are doing an exceptionally good job under horrible circumstances. And I'll leave it at that because I could go on for hours. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it. Yeah. So right now, that's our plan. I mean, as more details come in, probably by this Friday, uh, we'll be able to send you an updated uh, what it's going to look like, more exact, I guess. You know, like when we ask about what the individual one looks like or even the virtual, uh, well, I think we'll have a little bit more information. But there's so much going on right now, especially at the high school, all the schools, but at the high school. Um, and then we're just, you know, this with this whole pandemic and communication with the state, we're just on, it's really hard to be proactive because you try to be proactive and you end up reacting anyway. Does that make sense? Sure. Yep. It, it, it is very frustrating. And like, it, there was a lot of frustrated people on that call today. It was, it was amazing. So you'll probably read about it tomorrow, but maybe they won't cover stuff like that. I don't know. Anyway, does there anyone else have any more questions? Tim, I have, do you think there's any chance that they'll go back on this decision where we want to postpone <laughs> or, or do you think it's, we're past that? I think we're probably, we have to make it, it, things are coming up so quick here. We, we can't wait too much longer. Um, okay. I, if it was, I don't, I don't think so. I'll be honest, the way she sounded today, I would say no. In fact, I called another superintendent up afterwards and we talked this afternoon and, and I asked the same question to him and he did not think so. He thought they were very clear on it, that they couldn't go back now, especially what was said at that, at the MSBA call today. The only thing I can say, I know we did the right process and came to the right decision by surveying our, our students and parents. And I think we could have done it in a classy way. Um, and, you know, if we would have had to, go virtual by August 1st because this pandemic was still that way. We could have done that too, but right now um, they're telling us we can't, so we have to move on, I guess. Now, all that said, what happens if we hold a graduation? Well, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know if we can do that. I don't Ethically, I don't know if I could do that. If If I have a Directive from the Department of Education. I'd have a hard time recommending that. I can disagree, but I can't. Uh, I don't think we should apply in the face of a directive, I guess, even, I, if, I, even if we don't agree with it. A lot of times it's open for interpretation from the Department of Education, but this was not. That's all I say on that. Anything else? All right. Okay, so are we ready to take a, make a motion to approve the um, graduation proposal? So moved. Second? I'll, I'll second. Okay, uh, I'll do the roll call. Mark? All those in favor? Mark? Did we lose Mark? I didn't realize I was on mute. Yes. Okay, yes. Okay. Leo? Yes. Matt? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jean? Yes. So. Motion passes 7-0. Okay, next, uh, Nicole's going to go over the high school grading system again. This, doing the right thing on this, there has to be changes, especially at the high school level. She'll explain the rationale for that. And this also uh, came from uh, recommendations. Or, Nicole, you can, uh, it's recommendation. I think there were recommendations, I guess, from the Department of Education also when it comes to grading. So why don't you take me through this? 
Okay, I'm gonna go back to presenting my screen again. Oh, maybe I still am. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. great. Um, so we have been um, discussing grading at the high school for uh, a while now, and we've left it very open-ended up to this point. Um, particularly um, prior to the the um, executive order that we would not be returning to school for the remainder of the year. Um, once that decree came out, we then got a little more guidance about what is best practice for grading during distance learning, um, which was a direction that we've been trending and thinking about anyway and seems to be quite consistent with what most major comprehensive high schools are doing. Um, districts are recommended to create systems and policies that at this time, given these circumstances, that hold all students harmless. Um, the reason for this is because stress may impact a student's performance during this time, and that needs to be taken into consideration when determining a final grade. Also, inequalities may have been exacerbated under distance learning, and responsibilities may have changed for students during these uncertain times, creating difficulty for focusing on distance learning. Um, and this last one, we know especially to be true for many of our students. Um, we have a lot of students who have become um, caretakers for younger siblings, while parents who are frontline workers or essential workers are out. Um, and um, and or um, parents have lost um, their positions and students have now gotten to work as essential workers and are providing income for the for their families. Um, so knowing these three things, um, this is uh, what we are proposing. As you know, we use a traditional grading scale, A, B, C, D, and F typically. What we would propose is that we would use an A, B, or C, so students who earn um, a, a grade point average in a particular class that is either an A, a B, or a C at the end of semester will get that grade. Um, however, students who are showing some effort um, but may be struggling to demonstrate the same level of proficiency that they would were they in our building, um, they will earn a P or a pass. Um, we have this as an option for students currently. Um, usually um, we initiate it, um, counselors or administrators, or sometimes uh, in some cases, special education case managers, when we know that there are extenuating circumstances that are prohibiting a student from being successful. Um, a P is not factored into a student's GPA. And it is a recommendation that a, a student should not be reported as a failure or given an F during this period. So um, students who have shown um, no activity during distance learning um, will get an NC on their transcript, which indicates they do not get credit for the course. If it is, an ascent, if it is a required course for graduation, we are going to have to develop um, credit recovery opportunities for those students, which we have um, in, in process as we speak. And the benefits of this is using an A through C grading scale and the P slash NC. It does incorporate high performance into students' grade point averages. So those students who have continued to remain focused and engaged and are having success are not gonna be penalized um, but it minimizes the negative impacts. A consideration is that some colleges and universities do not accept courses that are graded as pass or no credit. Um, and so those are conversations that our counselors will need to have with students um, on a case-by-case -case basis. Teachers will assign these grades to students. Um, there will be an administrative review process with teachers and counselors to ensure that extenuating circumstances are taken into account when assigning a grade. And only students who have not engaged at all in distance learning will not earn credit. In addition, it is recommended that on all of our transcripts for our students, that we include this message on our transcript um, to ensure that it's very clear um, that when students are applying to for scholarships or post-secondary opportunities, um, that the 
the grades that are earned from March 16th through June 30th uh, reflect a distance learning period for, um, as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic, and that those grades need to be taken um, and weighed against um, other information um, when making decisions. Okay. Is that it, Nicole? Yes, that is it. Okay, we'll go reverse order. Um, if you have a question or comment, or you can pass if you want uh, for Nicole regarding grading, and then uh, we'll ask for approval of that. So I'll start with Mark. I'm good. Okay, Tammy. I'm good. Matt. Yeah, just one comment. Um, as you were putting this together, you know, based on the recommendations, I mean, I totally agree that grades should be adjusted and looked at during this time frame. Um, but did we look at even just not even doing A, B, or C and just doing pass, fail, or pass, um, not complete, just because we have that whole asterisk next to the transcript anyhow, basically mm -hmm. saying that that grade's not even, you shouldn't even look at that grade in the first place. We did, and we know that some schools have gone that route, and we have quite a variety of student in our building, and the reason we kept the A, B, and C piece is twofold. One, we do have a lot of students who um, are working um, towards um, post-secondary objectives and um, are having success, um, and we don't want to penalize them, so they still have that opportunity to earn that A, B, and C but our students who are struggling are not gonna be penalized in um, for not having that same level of success. Okay, thanks. And, and also the other piece too, just to follow up with that, Matt, also um, the P on a transcript is not factored into um, GPA. And so we know that a lot of students, um, that will be problematic for them as they apply um, for um, post-secondary uh, post secondary um, options in the future. And I think the long-term impact that has on, say, for example, our freshmen is significant. Um, and we know that we don't know how post-secondary um, institutions are going to come to regard this in the future. Leo? Nothing. Um, Kim? Sounds good. And Jane? That sounds very fair to me. Okay. And I I think it's a good plan. Oh, yeah, Denny, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I don't remember my order. It's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a tough call, but, you know, I know there are some schools that went strictly with pass, failed, and whatever. And I, I think having the grade as an option is important for some of the kids. So I'm happy that we're sticking with it. Okay. All right, thank you, Nicole. Thank you. So now uh, we'll have a, a, a vote to approve the high school grading system. Can I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Okay. And how do you vote, Tammy? Yes. Kim? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Matt? Yes. Leo? Yes. Mark? Yes. Jean, yes. So all, uh, all in favor. And next we have the approval of the 2020 district literacy plan. Okay, we got Lauren here to go over that. Yes. So our literacy plan, uh, there's not a lot of big changes from last year's literacy plan. The biggest change this year is that we don't have end of year data. And so um, without um, having you know, students in our buildings, March, April, and May, we made the decision to not do any digital end of year formal assessments through FAST and Fontes and Pinal, and then uh, the Department of Ed canceled the MCAs. So that column was removed for this year simply because we don't have that data. And then we also did uh, update our assessments for the upcoming year. We're going to move to a different measure for our entering kindergarten students in regards to our dyslexia protocol. And so that is reflected in the literacy plan. 
And this was uh, provided suggestions from both our kindergarten teachers along with our interventionists. So we collaborated together and we have a good plan moving forward. We have had a dyslexia procedure for the past couple of years and every year we continue to refine it. And so uh, we're excited to move in a, another direction for kindergarten, just simply being more targeted with the assessments that we're asking of the students when they come in that are definitely a more age appropriate measure. And then we will be able to begin intervening with students from the get go as well, because we will have targeted specific data. The other big change to our uh, literacy plan was simply updating resources with your approval in the past year of the teachers college reading curriculum along with the foundations phonics program that we plan to implement this fall we did add those resources to our literacy plan as well so those are the those are the big changes and uh, your approval is um, a formality and this plan also gets submitted to mde on a yearly basis and this year, instead of submitting year-end data to MDE, they have asked us to simply submit either fall of 2019 data or winter of 2020 data. And so that data has also been submitted um, with the exemption around COVID-19. All right. Does, any, does anybody have any comments? Just a question. How did how did the literacy program seem to be going up until March? Uh, yeah, you know, it, it's it's still pretty early to tell uh, because we, we purchased the program uh, in the middle of September and started doing professional development on it at the end of September. And then we've been throughout the course of the year. So, but all in all, our teachers have really um, embraced the new resources and really going really well. We actually did some digital PD with our consultant two weeks ago um, to just kind of keep the needle moving. It's moving at a slower pace right now because we're not able to, de to deliver it to its full uh, implementation standards just simply because of distance learning. Um, but we're still able to develop, or, um, we're still able to implement components of it given the current circumstance. Good, thank you. Does anybody else have a comment? Okay, so could I have a motion to approve the um, 2020 district literacy plan? I'll make the motion. Second? Second. Okay, um, so how do you vote, Mark? Yes. Leo? Yes. Matt? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Kim? Yes. Tammy? Yes. Jean, yes. Motion carries 7-0. And our next item is the strategic plan presentation. Yeah, I'm going to go through this, and Janelle's going to put uh, it up on the screen. But it's, uh, you know, when um, we moved ahead and you supported the, the start a new strategic plan, uh, our, our, our plan we've been updating, it was done back in 2008 and 2009. So it's about time we really take a look at where our reality is and where we want to go. Um, but with this whole COVID-19, everything that goes on right now, this is actually, we want to get started right now because we need to plan uh, for this next fall, but also to make next fall the short term, but we need to plan for the long term. I will say this right now, uh, education as we know it uh, in a traditional sense is changed forever now. So I say that is, next, you know, whether it's next fall or two years from now or five years from now, we have to be able to provide options, uh, learning in person, which is obviously very important, but also for online learning at the same time. And when I say online learning, I don't mean what currently is with distance learning. I think uh, uh, we need to be realize that online learning is gonna be a lot more rigorous than what we're currently doing in distance learning. And I don't wanna get too much into that right now, but it's gonna be a three-step process and um, why don't you go to the first slide there, Janelle. And the first, our first meeting, we're gonna be uh, putting together a group of administrators and some teachers and really looking at what do we know about next school year? And, but before we do that, we need to reflect. 
and what our current reality and going back this you know this spring right now even though it's not truly online but what were the positives what were the negatives what have we learned and that will be the first step in the process the second step will be in future learning is what do we know about next school year and what is the desired daily learning experience for students, family, and staff? And when we talk about desired da daily learning experience, two things are going to happen by, in, in, if you think how fast, it's been two months basically uh, since school has been called off. And in two months from now, I mean, we're going to be a month away from school almost. So we got a lot to get done in this time frame here, but um, what do we want the desired daily learning experience? I do know this much. I don't know exactly what it's going to look, but I believe that we will have school, but not everyone's going to come to school. And if we don't provide an online learning component with this, we are going to lose a lot of kids because we have students that have underlying health conditions right now. We have over 200 on a list within our nurses offices right now. We've got parents with underlying health conditions. We've got parents that I've already have said, even no matter what happens with COVID-19, um, they're not gonna be sending their children uh, to our school. Um, and we also have students, for example, at the secondary le level, that, like I said, I think the rigor is going to be much different online than it is distance learning uh, that like that flexibility and may choose to do that. So if we don't provide it, either homeschooling will provide it or online private uh, online uh, learning companies will provide it. I'm sure we'll see a lot of commercials for that. So we need to provide that balance next year. What it's going to look like, um, I'm not sure. But the third step in the process, go ahead, Janelle, to the operational. We have to figure out what abilities, resources, and capacity we have, and also who is doing what and when to execute this plan. So this is a lot of work that we've got to get done starting now and hopefully figuring out by late June or beginning of July here, uh, for sure by our July board meeting. Uh, we'll probably update you at the June one, but then also uh, probably act on things in that July board meeting that we have uh, scheduled. So a lot going on, but we were going to do this part of the strategic plan anywhere, but anyway, but to get started on it now and be specific in going into for next fall, um, I think is important. And like I said, yeah, it's the short term, but I, I believe it's going to stay here for the long term now too. Um, you know, and we could have distance learning, I mean, or just online learning next fall too. There, we, who knows? We not, might not go back to school. I I can't imagine, I have a neighbor down the street who's got a, a student in high school who's doing fine, but can you imagine having a, a kindergartner right now uh, just learning how to read? And as great a job as our teachers are doing right now to uh, you know, not have that uh, child in person uh, with the teacher uh, teaching them reading, because she says, I do the best I can, but I'm not a teacher. So hopefully, um, Pray to God we'll be back in school. Uh, but even if we're back in school, I think we need, we're going to have to prepare for uh, this online learning option uh, for our students and families. So I'll open up for questions right now. We'll go around the horn again. And uh, I'll start this time with Matt. Matt, do you have any questions or comments? Yeah, Tim, you had mentioned during your reflection process, you're going to have admin and teachers and things in there. I mean, I would encourage you to maybe get some parents in there as well, um, just because, I mean, not me, but I know my wife has turned into the teacher of our, you know, third nope. and first grader. And so just getting feedback and um, just from all different, you know, whether it's high school kids or um, elementary kids or middle school, um, I think it'd be important to get their feedback as well, just because I think, like you said, teachers are doing an awesome job. They're giving us great tools and resources to use. But I mean, I personally think this model isn't sustained. I mean, it's not sustainable for the long run. So I think there has to be something that we can do to hopefully bridge this gap if we're not back in school in the in the fall. So I agree. I agree. Yeah. And I believe Tony is working with we work with uh, Ray Queener from Teamworks International. He's our consultant that we're working with. 
And I know, Tony, you were going to check on that today. We talked about parents being on there too, or possibly a student. So uh, I'll let you know what that looks like probably by this Friday for our weekly wrap. Okay. Uh, Dennis. You're mute. You're on mute. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I think getting going on it as quickly as possible is a good idea. Uh, we can't wait until uh, next year. Uh, we need to get going on it right now. And I think looking at all the different facets that uh, the virus has brought up, I think is uh, very important because like you said, uh, things are not going to be the same as they were before. So uh, including a strategic plan that will embrace all the different things that are going to be happening is very important. Okay. Thank you. Mark? Uh, sounds good to me. I just hope that a lot of, a lot of administrators and superintendents are pushing very hard to have schools open next fall because it's, it's totally necessary and, and I don't see why they can't be open by that time. I agree. Dean? Yeah, I think it's good to, to plan for any, uh, all these different contingencies. And, and uh, that's a good point that, you know, it's not only that the kids, vulnerable kids that may not be able to come back to school, but, but there are people in their household, they don't want them bringing home something to vulnerable people in the household. So, but this must be a nightmare to try to plan for. That's all I've got to say. Well, I, I should mention too, this is uh, our, you know, our strategic plan is on, this is on, you know, student learning and everything, but we're also, we're planning an adult model too, because we also know uh, we might not have, uh, we know we're not going to have everyone back uh, in the different areas for employment too. So that we're planning for that, whether it's in transportation, teachers, paras, there's so many loose ends right now um, uh, that we have to prepare for and plan too. So that, that ties into it too. Tammy? Nope, I think we're going in the right direction. Thank you. We have to move forward. So we're gonna be George Jetson pretty soon. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Leo. I think every effort needs to be made to get the kids back in school, back on a regular schedule. Because if we're not careful and we start sliding more to the online and to the tailoring to needs. The only thing we're going to do is show just how inconsequential the public school can turn out to be. Mm. Okay. And then Kim. I think everybody has it covered, but I just think, I mean, I think we will, you'll have a good group, a good administrative group to work on it. And I'm sure there's going to be plenty of changes between now and the beginning of the school year, but it is what it is. We got to do what we can do and make it the best we can be. Okay. Thank you. That's all I have on that then, unless anyone else has any other questions or comments. Okay. Next is the high school league. High school league resolution. Denny, do you have the resolution? Yes, I, yes I've got it here. Uh, this time I'll consider uh, the resolution. Do I have a motion for considering the resolution to belong to re up our membership in the Minnesota State High School League? Second. It's, been, it's been moved and seconded to consider the resolution to renew our membership in the Minnesota State High School League and uh, to uh, get all the benefits of that program and also to abide by all the rules and regulations of that program. Uh, how do you vote on this uh, resolution, Tammy? Yes. Jane? Yes. Matt? Yes. Mark? Yes. Leo? Yes. Kim? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Item passes. Okay, and uh, could I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. 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 All those in favor? Aye. 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 Seven zero. Motion to adjourn. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. I'll have that. Uh,
strategic plan uh, committee update and the grad, grad graduation details, uh, hopefully by Friday and the weekly wrap. Perfect. Thank you. All Thanks, right.